Enotria, the last song, was released on September 19th, 2024. Unlike many games that just proclaim to be Souls-like, it definitely is one. Uh, it was developed by JAMA Games and is available on PC, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, and Series S. So Enotria is an Italian folklore-inspired title inspired by Commedia dell'Arte, sorry for that, um, which is a theatrical style that originated in Italy during the Renaissance and was known for its imp improvised dialogue, colorful characters, and physical comedy. In the game, the world um, has been gripped by the Canovaccio, uh, which is like a twisted eternal play that keeps the world in an unnatural stasis or kind of a bad, a bad state. Uh, you play as a character called the Maskless One and are the, the only character in the world that is not bound by fate so you have the free will and ability to kind of shape your own destiny and as such the world around you too. The art style is unique and pretty interesting. It's brighter than a lot of um, Souls titles that I've played in the past. Uh, that being said, the animations of characters unfortunately were really really stiff in my opinion. It made everything just feel uh, slower and uh, comparatively lacking um, even when looking at much, much older uh, titles in the Souls foreign genre. In Enotria, you can use up to 120 different weapons, 45 spells, parry or ability modifiers, other items, abilities. There's, there's lots of different things that you can do to change up your build. Uh, the basics of the game are fundamentally very easy to pick up as they follow the expected controls um, with some few exceptions. So if you've played a Souls game before, you're not going to uh, be very lost here. Uh, that being said, the tutorial is pretty lacking uh, as it gets to the more intermediate layers of the game, such as descriptions of weapon elements, status effects, uh, how weapons scale, uh, just terminologies here and there, which make creating a build pretty difficult to grasp and understand. Uh, one example of this was uh, for an ability description, um, typically it would say short cooldown, medium cooldown, long cooldown, or something. Uh, for this game, they they stuck really, you know, with the theme and went with Italian music terminology. For example, uh, Presto um, was a very fast cooldown, uh, as it's described as 168 to 200 beats per minute. Again, cool thematically, but not in practice, as you know, having to Google. Google which word meant what was pretty necessary and kind of stopped the flow of uh, playing the game. The music overall fit the aesthetic. It was above average in my opinion. I liked it. Uh, it was not my style or my you know um, preference, but it it fit the game and I, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Performance wise, the game did moderately well. I streamed it simultaneously on my two and a half year old uh, Lenovo Legion Pro laptop. Uh, it was not uh, struggling too much on the high end, but I did uh, tune it down just to get some better frame rates and didn't really notice any substantial um, degradation of graphics. So I would say it performed uh, pretty well. My overall thoughts, uh, areas were not very frustrating to navigate or survive through. Some definitely were. But there is definitely some improvements that could be made on the map design and layout, particularly because it's a fairly linear game. And even with that, knowing where to go at times were not as obvious as it could have been, especially compared to other, you know, more linear souls likes. Bosses were unique um, and entertaining as they were consistent with the Italian folklore vibe, with a few frustrating ones here and there that required some time to clear. Thankfully, most of those were optional. That being said, the fights themselves were not overly challenging, uh, but some uh, were definitely made trivial with certain builds. That did mean that some of the more challenging ones, you needed to think about how to uh, really utilize your builds uh, properly. And they were very gracious with uh, a respawn area where you could customize everything that you needed to, usually right outside of a boss area. Overall, it took me about 28 hours to complete. Uh, it started off very strong for me. I, I really enjoyed it in the beginning, and as I started to play it more and more, it started to fall off in enjoyment. 
particularly the last third where I was really hoping for something more grand to happen and nothing really did for me. Uh, there certainly is replayability as there are many different ways to focus your build, uh, many weapons and abilities that you only obtain later in the game. So there are heaps of combinations and ways to play it. Um, that being said, it's a $50 title, uh, $49.99. I would probably give it a five or a six just off of value and enjoyment. Uh, if you lower that price to about $29.99, I would give the game a solid, a solid eight. Thanks so much for watching this review. Please let me know if there are any other games you'd like for me to give an honest review on and I'll happily do so. Take care. Much love. Bye.